Hello everyone, today I'm going to go over how to use Heroes Power Plant to make Sonic Heroes mods. If you don't already have it, download it here. Make sure to download 0.7.1 because that version is the one that's not bugged. Make sure to download Heroes Tweaker so that you can get start positions for levels if you need them. And of course, download Reloaded Mod Loader so that we can actually do mods for the game. Now, what you'll want to do first is you'll want to make a project file. So you'll want to do Save As and then go to your mod folder, which you'll probably want to have a backup of your original. And then just do whatever. And if you want to join the Discord for support, you can always go here. That's in the About area if you want it, but, you know. So first of all, let's go into Level Editor so that we can actually see our level. We're going to open Seaside Hill, which is SO1H. The H is usually the one that you want to open, so go into that. And once you've gone into that, we don't have any textures, so let's add those textures. Let's go to SO1. Let's add SO1.txt and ObjectCommon.txt. And once we add both of those, object textures and regular textures should be there. As you can see, we've got these beautiful textures now. Now we're also going to want to load our objects. So let's go in here. Let's go into our layouts. We've got about seven of these. We have Team Sonics, P1, Team Darks, Team, team 2. We've got Team Roses, Team Chaotixes, Team Superhards, Scenery 1, Scenery 2. And there we go. Now you'll see that we have a lot of objects here and we can change any of the objects by clicking on it and then going to this little drop down. We can change it to a lot of these, but we can't change it to all of them because not all of them are in the level. If you want to check if something's in the level, you can go into the set ID table editor and you can go ahead and open that file. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of things here. If we go to the dash panel, we can see obviously that is in Seaside Hill. If we go to the weight though, by default that is not. Now the weight would probably work if we just set it here. But if we went to say, I don't know, the pumpkin ghost, as you can see that doesn't have a check mark and it probably wouldn't work because the model is not in the one and it has to be in the object one to actually load. Now, of course, we haven't loaded the object ones, have we? So let's do that. So if we go into com object that one, you'll see that that loaded. And if you did not load the object common texture or earlier, then that won't actually have textures on it. Now, if we want to actually load the Seaside Hills objects as well, we got to go into so one object one. And now you can see all these other things that I've loaded too. Okay, so now we've got that done. But how do we actually go about and make objects? Well, we have two options here. We can go and click objects or click them here and then copy them. And that's perfectly valid if we want to go and copy something. Sometimes it's a little sticky on that. You have to click twice. But anyways, once you do that, you can move it around like that. Or if you want to be more precise, you can go and type in here, like I want this to be at exactly 72 or something. You can also decide, you know what? I want this to be a ring, because why not? And you know what? I want this to be a circle of rings, because I do. Let's make it nine rings. Let's make it, I don't know, length nine, radius nine. Can have a nice little thing of rings there. And that's the basics of messing with objects. You have these little sub parameters that you can play with and you can do whatever you want with those essentially. But you know, you can spawn about anything here. 
it doesn't really matter as long as it's within the objects that we're allowed to spawn. But you know, placing things is all well and dandy, but what if we want to place the player? Well, let's go into the mod loader config. Now, by default, this has something preloaded from earlier, but by default this is going to be all zeroed out. All this is going to be zero, zero, zero. We can get the parameters if we want by going into here as tweaker, and then selecting the exe, going into start in position editor, selecting our level, and as you can see here, that's all filled out. We can go and paste that into the thing there, but we don't want to do that. Let's just say today that we want to go and just use the defaults here, just go and edit that and make it into our own thing. Let's set that to 100, since right below those dash panels is 0, 0, 0. And let's make it face the correct way, because we want it to face the correct way. You know. Camera's getting a little funny there. Anyways. Now that we've done that, let's set the ending position to about the same, maybe a little less, so that we can actually see it. And, you know, let's just make it so that we can't control the player at the start. Now you have three modes here, normal, running, and rail. Hold time won't do anything on normal, but on rail and running it'll determine the amount of time that the player just sits there unable to move. So that's good if you want the player to have like a running start and you don't want them to be able to do anything, such as at the beginning of Egg Fleet. Let's just set hold time of 5 just to see. And let's pl place this a little out of the way so that we don't immediately run into it. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and save our layout. And let's go ahead and save our stage here. Of course, we should probably also save our project so that when we reopen the program, all of this can come back again. We can just open this and then open our little project file here. And then all the Seaside Hill stuff will load again, all of the textures and everything. Saving here will not save all of these little things, but it will save you some trouble of having to reopen everything. Now, anyways. I want to save this somewhere, so let's just save it in the same directory as that. Name it stage.json. It's very important that that's named stage.json. And we save this. So now we're actually going to put that in game. We're going to go into the tools folder. We're going to go into the generic stage injection, reloaded mod template. And let's rename that folder to whatever we want. I don't know, my mod. Now, it's going to reload it itself. Maybe minimize these. Go to Manage for Sonic Heroes. Go to Open Mod Directory. Now we have our mod directory. Let's place my mod into it. Now we need to edit the config.json to say something different. If it does not have a unique ID, it will not work. So let's name that my mod and my mod. Why not? You need to edit those if you want things to work right and reloaded. You can edit any of the other things too if you want, but you don't have to. Now. Let's go ahead and put stage.json into here, and since we edited the file for Team Sonic, we'll put that into files here, and that should be good to go. Now all you have to do is go ahead and activate that mod there, and launch the game. Now, if your game takes a little while to start up, don't worry about it. Heroes does that. It's notorious for it. But anyways, we'll go in here, we'll select Team Sonic, and we'll load up the stage. 
And as you can see, we started in the right location. We have our objects there and everything. You see that little circle of rings? They look like Sonic Adventure rings, but don't worry about that. That's just another mod. And as you can see, the end location worked too. And there you have it. If you'd like to learn how to make more mods, check out the other videos and check out our Discord. Thanks for watching.